Hi guys, it's Vonna the Twisted Stitcher, and today I'm going to share with you how to make a scissors fob without using a sewing machine. We are going to use all hand stitching to construct this fob, which then can translate to using hand sewing for little pillows, for soft ornaments, however you want to use it. If you have the time and the talent to do this with your just using your hands, it can be done. This design was designed by me. It is available on my blog, The Twisted Stitcher at blogspot.com. I have specific instructions on the design and please do pay attention to those instructions and follow it exactly as what I describe on the design so that it's easier for you to put together at the end. We will be using cording, handmade cording. I can't begin to tell you how much hand handmade cording, um, coordinating with your piece, how much that really makes a piece. If I at all can encourage you to learn how to make cording, please do so. I have a video on my channel, uh, Vonna Pfeiffer on YouTube, that describes on how to make cording. In that cording, I say, strands and when I say strands I mean a a length of DMC which includes all six strands so in this cording we don't want it very thick for a scissors fob so I used only five lengths of all six strands so just how it comes off your DMC how it comes off the the skein I used five lengths of this to create this, okay? So, um, I encourage you to learn how to make cording. It just really does make a piece special. So, we'll be using cording. We will need some of the DMC that you made your cording with and what you did your back outline in, back stitch outline in. You will need some cording to do your hand sewing. We will need some stuffing, all right? And, of course, needles hand sewing needles. All right. So, I have already I have already ironed this piece and we're going to cut this out. Now, I would typically use a ruler and a rotary blade to do this. I am not going to do that today for some people don't have those things on hand and I'm going to show you that it is possible. Okay? So, you don't have to really pay much attention to how many threads or all that is. You just don't want it right next to the back stitching because this will unravel. So I try to leave about anywhere from a quarter of an inch to a half an inch around my pieces, okay? So I'm just going straight up here. We're gonna do the top here. And then we're gonna go back down the side. Do your best to make straight cuts. You can follow the linen thread or Ada threads as you cut. Okay, we're going to do a, half, a quarter to a half an inch here. You don't want it much more than just a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. And then how to get equal on both sides. If you do it according to the way I describe it, you just match up those corners like that and then cut down the middle. All right, so. Here you can see that you have, this is the front and this is the back, okay? Now then, when we start to sew this together, these back stitches are where we're going to link them together so that we can sew them together. That keeps your edge straight and very nice. So get a one strand off of your thread that you're going to sew with. I like to do the loop method. And since we're sewing this together, this is a hand sewn construction. I like to use bees, beeswax to strengthen my thread. So just run it through the beeswax a couple of times. Okay, we're going to do a loop method. 
You can get however long of a strand of thread that you want to start out with. This is probably 36 inches long, and when I fold it in half here to do my loop start, it's going to be about 18 inches, which is what I like to work with. Okay, get your needle, and you're going to thread your needle with both, you know, just like you're doing um, a loop start, okay, with two, you know, with so that you'll have two strands to sew with. That gives it a little bit of strength. Okay, so now we're gonna finger press this. And when I say finger press, all that simply means is we're gonna fold it over like this, right along where that back stitching is. Make sure that your initials, if you use my design, make sure that your initials are right side up rather than upside down. We're gonna line up these stitches, these little back stitches, line them up, and you can choose to use a straight pin to hold this together, or you can use it, just sew it together with your hand. I like to, to sew it, to like pin it, at least pin it one place so that I can, I don't have to like fight it. All right. So then, we're going to catch this stitch, this back stitch right here, okay? And we're gonna catch the one directly across from it. Okay, so I've caught both of those, cross, both of those back stitches. And we're going to pull our thread through, through the loop, because we're doing a loop method, and there we go, okay? So now we're just going to do back and forth like that, catching one side of the back stitch, catching the other side, pulling it through. Now we're gonna cross it back over, catch this back stitch, catch this back stitch, pull it on through, cross it back over. This is sort of like a whip stitch well, it is a whip stitch, but just using the back stitches as kind of a guide to keep your, your stitching straight. All right, so now here we go. We're straight across. We got it straight across, nice and straight, both sides. Now then, we are going to debulk the corners. If you have followed your um, back stitching, you're going to notice that it, you know, lines up on both sides, and so we don't have to worry about where we're going to cut. We're just going to cut straight across. Okay, at an angle, right like this. Check it to make sure it's fine. I'm gonna cut it, okay? All right, now then we're going to finger press this one. Make sure those back stitches are right on the top of where we're going to sew. Okay, I'm gonna hold this. Since this is a longer length, I'm going to put a pin in. Do the same thing on the other side. Finger pressing, put a pin in to kind of hold that edge. Okay, 
I'm gonna fold it all together here. We're gonna match up our stitches. It's gonna be tough in the corner because we got a lot going on here. But before you totally line it up, go ahead and catch that one corner stitch on one side and then one, the one directly across from it. And then go ahead and tuck the rest of them in and start sewing down the other side, okay? It's gonna take you a couple stitches to get it all back on track again. Don't be frustrated or upset. Just go slow, take deep breaths. Okay, see, I made the round turn around the corner. Now it's gonna be cake all the way down to the edge, okay? Again, let me show you. Again, we're getting one side and then the other side. Don't catch any of those linen threads. Pull it across, catch one side, and then the other all the way down. All right, I'm gonna speed it up. All right, so we're back at the corner. You can see, I've got all, so we got two sides done. Looking good, right? Looking good. Okay, so now we're gonna cut it again. Now then, as I was sewing, I was thinking that maybe I got a little bit too aggressive with my last corner. So cover your stitches right there. You don't wanna cut below your finger now, okay? So just cut it like that. That will debulk it enough, fold it over. Kind of finger press it with those back stitches on the top. Put a pin to hold the towards the end. And then do the same thing on the other side. Back stitches on the top. Put a pin to hold the end close to the closer to the end. Now we're going to deal with this corner. We're going to fold it in as best we can. We can tweeze it down with the with our needle as we, you know, tuck in the 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 linen threads as we go, okay? We've got this first stitch here. <clears throat> we're going to go from the back one side to the other side. Just catching those back stitches. Okay. All right, that's successful. That's the most critical one, is that one right on the corner. And then the one back next to it. Got it.
from the back side to the front side a whip stitch. Pull it and push it back over, okay? All the way to the end. I'm going to speed it up. Okay, so here we are at the corner. I covered it and I cut it, okay? Now then, leave this string, this thread and needle hanging, okay? But we're gonna focus down here on this corner because we wanna meet about right here, leave this space open for stuffing. You don't wanna stuff at a corner because that's just very difficult, okay? So we're going to load up another needle with thread and we're gonna sew this corner in, okay? Okay, so let's debulk the corner. Again, we're gonna hold it and snip it, then fold it in as best we can. Okay. Get our second needle. We're gonna come get the very first stitch along that corner. And then the other side. Okay. Okay, got it started. All right, now then, now it's easier. That corner stitch is really hard. So when you are messing, when you're sewing this, you gotta mess with it a lot. And I know that you'll get frustrated, but just take a deep breath and go slow one side to the other side and you'll it'll work out just fine okay now then we're going to fold this in all right we're going to fold it in and we're going to go down to about the edge of the sunflower so just go ahead and put a pin there and that reminds us to stop, okay? So I'm gonna sew this up here. Okay, so we've got one side done. Sorry I didn't talk to you about how to end off, but you're going to end off your thread like a lasso, and there you go. Okay, so now we're going to start from this corner and stop about right here so that we have enough space to stuff it. And while I'm not going to speed this up, I'm just going to talk to you the whole time because there's some things that I want to talk about um, if you would do this on other projects. So we're going to pick up that first stitch on the corner on one side, then the other side, pull it tight. Tuck everything in. It's fiddly, I know, but 
if you don't want to use a sewing machine, this is what you do to make it very pretty. Okay, so we're going to get the other side. Okay. All right, now it's going to be a little bit easier, not quite as fiddly. Okay, so what I wanted to talk about with you is, um, let's say that you want to do this for a pillow. You don't want to use a sewing machine, but you want to have pretty fabric on the back. It's really tough to kind of do that um, hand sewing using this method, but it can be done. You just have to measure the backing fabric exactly and kind of lay out your back stitches or at least put back stitches on the front side uh, or on, yeah, on the front side, so on your stitching side, and then catch those with, you know, to kind of guide you to sew the backing fabric on. It can be done, but I think that honestly, it's easier just to do it a backing with linen or Ada. So just do exactly like I've shown here. You don't have to sew on the back, but I mean, you can use the back as a way to initial or put your initials on it in the year or whatever. So if you're thinking, oh, I can do this with, you know, pretty fabrics on the back, you can, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult um, to do that. You would need to, you know, make the, the decorative fabric the same exact size as your front, do the back stitches on your linen piece, and then pin it, kind of fold it over, um, you know, leave your, your um, make an edge by ironing your decorative fabric in to be the same side. So you would want to cut your decorative fabric a little larger than your front piece have a back stitch around all your front piece, but which you're going to press, you know, finger press in. Then press your um, decorative fabric the same size as what your finger pressed in piece is, and then you would just sew it like that using the back stitches on the front as a guide, if that makes sense. Okay, we're getting close to where we're going to stop right here and stuff. So now when you're stuffing a fob, you're not going to stuff it real, you know, tight like I typically do on my sewn pieces because a machine sewn piece is a little bit stronger than a hand sewn piece just because the stitches are tighter and closer together. So what we're going to do is we are going to take our stuffing and our chopstick and we're going to just put a little bit of stuffing in there i'm not going to be aggressive i'm just going to you know gently stuff in there get your stuffing um i know people are going to ask can i use sawdust can i use you can use whatever you want to use just, you know, be careful um, putting it in there. Don't be real aggressive because you don't want to blow out what you've already done. Okay, I'm going to stick, um, I'm going to do the tops. I'm going to do the bottom first all the way around. Then I work on one side. Now I'm going to work on the other side.
Okay, it's about halfway stuffed and I'm going to put in a drapery weight for weight. So we're just gonna tuck that in, okay? You don't have to do this. I like to have my fobs a little bit heavy because that's why that's why you wear use a fob is because this is heavy and when your scissors fall like they are want to do when they fall this will fall first rather than them falling on their points and hurting your floor or hurting your scissors so i put a drapery rate weight in there i'm gonna then stuff in front of it and behind it so that you can't really feel it it's not noticeable in your piece you want it kind of like cocooned inside the stuffing. So I got some in front of it. I'm gonna put some behind it. All right, so it's all stuffed, and the last thing that I do is I put a penny in for good luck and to keep the frogs away. And now we're gonna sew this up, okay? Okay, here we are at the ending spot. I'm gonna take a stitch over under the first where we we ended up over here just to join them together with strength. Take another stitch to the ending, the other spot to kind of, so you're making kind of an X is what you're making. Just so that joins that, we're gonna hide that so it doesn't matter if it looks bulky. Okay, so now that we're, done we're going to take another stitch through to create a loop and we're going to go through the loop twice or the lasso twice we're going to pull it tight we're going to take our needle and weave it inside under these stitches and out down here okay and we're going to pull it to kind of pop that you don't want to pull it real hard, but just pop that knot into place. And now we're going to end off by clipping the thread. And there, my friends, we have our fob, okay? Now then, a little trick that I've learned is that if you put this down onto your ironing board with a hot, steamy iron and just press it, that will kind of be kind of like smooth this a little bit and I'm gonna go do that right now. So you put this down onto your ironing board. You can put a piece of just uh, 
muslin or cotton on top to not crush your stitches and just kind of hold it with the steam going as long as you don't have um this is all out of dmc as long as you don't have over dyed thread you're fine so i'm going to go do that and i'll be right back i'm back now then we're going to add our cording and this will be the final step so i want my cording i want my fob to hang you know like this okay so what I'm going to do is we're going to fold our cording in half, okay? We're going to fold our cording in half. We don't want a real large loop, but we need a loop that'll big enough that this can fit through, so we need it a little bit bigger than that, okay? That'll fit nicely, so we're going to tie just an overhand knot in, in this, okay? In this cording, right down to where my thumb was, okay? Now then, when you get this tied, make sure that your, your fob will fit through it fine, okay? Pull it tight, okay? Now, we're gonna start it, let's see where do I wanna start it. I think we want it to read like this, so we want to put it on this end, okay? So before we do that, let's load up another needle with the same color thread. This time, um, we're going to just do a single strand of thread because we're going to sew, whip stitch our cording on. Okay, so load your thread up. We're going to just quickly run it through one time some beeswax just give it a little strength kind of tame it a little bit and we're going to do a quilter's knot so cross your thread over your needle wrap it all 10 times since it's a single strand and pull that knot off your needle all the way down to the end to cre create a knot okay there's the knot if you can see it Okay, trim your end. Okay, now we're gonna sink this needle, this knot right into this knot on the cording, okay? Okay, so now our, our thread and our needle is attached to the cording, okay? Now then, set the needle down and we're gonna put this on to our fob. And how we're gonna do this is we are going to, here's my thread that I just sunk in the knot. I'm going to take straight pins and I'm going to put it right beside that knot on either side. So one cording leg on that side and one cording leg on the other side. You want to center it, okay? So this is the center and there's the knot and you kind of want to just hang, just kind of lay this cording out on either side of your fob just to help you so you don't have like all this cording flying all around and all of that going on. So just to help you, okay? Okay, now we're gonna do it to the other side. And we're not gonna go all the way down on the other side. I just wanna hold this loosely on this other side. So I'm gonna put one there and one down here. We're gonna sew from the knot this way first, okay? Okay, so my, my thread is coming out the knot. Okay, so I want to do a few securing stitches right in the center. There's, this is the center. We're gonna catch the linen, just the front thread of linen on either side, just like that, okay? You wanna kinda hide it and you'll hide it if it's close up to the, to the knot. See, nobody can see that I took a, a stitch there. Okay, so we wanna catch the cording and the knot there. So 
And we're gonna pull this tight so my knot is right against the linen. We're gonna catch the cording, the knot. We're not gonna catch the linen this time. We're just going through the knot, okay? Pull that tight. Now we're gonna go in the linen, just the first line of linen there. Again, I'm just trying to tack on this knot, okay? Now we're going through the knot again to the front. And the reason we're doing this so many times is that the knot is what's gonna hold this cording onto the scissor fob and we wanna make sure that it is secure, okay? So let's go back in again, very first thread of the linen from the front to the back again. Okay. And do it one more time. Through the knot to the front. And then the first thread of the linen to the back side. And now we are ready to just go whip stitch from here all the way to the middle down here, okay? So just whip stitch your your piece on however you would like to do that. You want to cover where we have sewn our piece together. So I'm going to bring it to the front and I'm going to go from the front to the back just like that through the cording, okay? And I'm going to sew it on. Using a stringle, single strand of floss, it's easier to hide. And I'm just sewing it right, whipping, whip stitching across from the front to the back, sewing that cording right in the ditch of that seam. Now I'm right-handed, so I have to sew from right to left. If you are left-handed, you would sew, sew left from right, okay? When we're at the corner, you wanna take a couple stitches right at the corner to secure it. Okay, that's secured on. Now we're gonna go from the corner all the way to this corner and I'm gonna speed it up.
Okay, we're getting to where we're gonna end off. So we want our end off right where we started our knot. So that's right in the center here, where the B trail is. So right there is the center. And we are going to end off. So I made my last stitch there. I'm gonna make another stitch right in the same place to secure it. And I'm gonna do it one more time, making a loop. And I'm going to go through the loop twice and then pull it tightly, okay? I'm gonna come back to the back. I'm gonna pop that knot into the cording and end off, okay? Now then, so we've got our cording on one side there it is okay now we're going to do it on the back on you know on this side so again i'm right right handed so i need to go from right to left if you're left handed you would go from left to right however you want to do it it doesn't matter which side of cording you sew on okay so we're going to load up our needle again Make a quilter's knot, X on your or a plus sign on your needle, hold it, wrap it a couple times, ten about ten times since this is a thin thread. Pull it all the way down to the end, and there's your knot. And clip the end. Okay, so we're gonna go up through the knot this time to catch it the knot from our thread. Right there, we're gonna go back down the same way we came. Out the bottom of the knot, okay? We're gonna take another couple of stitches right here, again through the, through the linen first, then through the knot. Just to hold everything together. Secure that knot, okay? All right, pretty pleased with that. Now we're just gonna go ahead and sew our cording on, same as the other side. Catch the loop of the cording and whip stitch it in place. Okay, all the way around. Okay, so we're here where our cording has met, okay? I'm gonna cross the legs, all right? 
and I'm going to just take a few stitches through both of them to secure that on there like that. Okay. I'm going to take another where I'm going through both, both cordings. Okay. Just the top stitch of the linen, top thread of the linen. Again, I'm going to go around again. And one more time. So three times to secure. See, I've just made, I just like gathering them both up and taking a small stitch through both of them. We've got our lasso here on the last stitch, third time through. We're gonna make our lasso go through it twice. End off, pull it tight. And we can just snap that off, okay? Or, or cut it off. All right, now then, we're not done, but look, we got our our cording all the way around. Okay, look, there's the back side, there's the front side. Now then, a, a, you do not have to sew the cording on. Since this was a completely hand construction um, video showing how you could do it, You, this is how I did it sewing. You can also glue it on. Whatever you prefer, it doesn't matter. If you're gonna glue it on, you would have to still sew the knot on so that to give it strength because the glue wouldn't hold the knot and it wouldn't hold it straight. So you would want to sew that knot in the middle, glue down to this way, and then glue in the ditch and, and stick it. And when you glue, I would put these all along it to hold it until it's, it's dry and just cross it at the bottom and then continue with what I'm going to show you next, okay? So we're going to make a little tassel down here. So what I do is I'm going to take a length of my th thread. So just a piece of your DMC, one piece. We're gonna double, we're gonna loop start it here. Okay, so we're gonna go through these, go through these legs again just the top linen thread, okay, because we want it to hold. We're going to go through our lasso, our loop, to start the loop method, okay? Now then, we're going to pull this thread up and to the side, okay? We're going to cut the ends, because we have it secure, we're going to cut the ends of this floss, okay? Or this cording, sorry. Now then, we're going to take our we're gonna unravel its hair here. I always think of my girls and their braided hair when I do this, okay? We're gonna make a little tassel. So you want the, the strands of the floss flowing like a ponytail, okay? So you've got your ponytail. Now we're going to wrap our floss around like this, okay? Just wrap it a couple of times. And we're going to come back through the cording like this, okay? So it looks like a little ponytail, all right? Go back to the back. Okay, so there we have that, all right? You could leave it at that if you want to, but I kind of like mine to look like an actual tassel. So I'm going to hold this like this, take my, my thread down, Hold my thread with the others, and then I'm going to wrap it a couple of times around. Wrap it a couple times kind of ooch all these threads together like this, and then I'm going to go under all of them that I've wrapped. See, like that, I'm gonna go out under all of them that I wrapped, and I'm going to pull it tight, not getting any of these other. Okay, pull it tight. See how I'm making a little, like, head there? Okay, so I'm gonna go under all, all of the wraps again. 
Okay, now I'm going to go back, I'm going to pierce it, the wraps, and I'm going to pierce, pierce them again. All right, and I'm going to go over it, catch all of them. Okay, and then I'm going to go under, but I'm going to come out the side, okay? So it's only going to catch a couple of the threads, and now I'm going to end it off, okay? All right, so there we have our little tassel. Now we just want to cut it to, to make it even. And there you go. There is your scissors fob, completely all hand sewn. You can put a little charm there if you want, or you could just, you know, end off like I showed you here, and then that would be done. However you want to do it, put it on your scissors. And there you go. Be kind, Scissors Bob. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. I hope that you will be able to make a scissor fob, pillows, whatever your heart desires, all by hand. And until the next time, when I see you again, keep a smile on your face and one in your heart, and you just can't go wrong. Bye-bye. Thank you.